Now we're going to take a look at ranges. Uh, and remember, a range is just a cell in an Excel worksheet. And a range can be a single range like this, one cell, or it can be a group of cells. If we're going to have a grouping of cells like this or range, we're going to define it by its top left and its bottom right parameters. So in this case, the scores for the students reside on cell B2 to cell E10. And that defines that block or that range. When we're looking at a range, we can read data from a range, and we've been doing that. We can write data to a range, and we've been doing that. Uh, we can select ranges. We can enter formulas in a range. We can format them, make them bold, red, whatever the case may be. Uh, we can copy them and paste them. And our ranges can reside on the same worksheet or a different worksheet or a different workbook. So there's actually quite a few things that, uh, that are going on. Uh, and in this case, we're going to take a look at ranges uh, and how we can define them, as well as the properties and methods. And then in other videos, we'll take a look at some of the practical applications for the work that we're doing now. The first thing we'll do is look at reading values from a range. So if I want to read the value here in address B2, I can declare the range. And then the address is here in the string, so it's in the, the quotes. Dot value, so whatever is in there. And I'm going to stick that into the variable number. And then I'm just going to use a message box to dump that variable out. So we would expect a message box that says 58. And we get that. So we're just reading what's in here and utilizing that, putting it into a variable, and dumping that back out. Now, if we were to go the other direction, I've declared a variable. I've populated that variable with a value. And now I'm saying into this particular range, set the dot value property equal to that variable. So I'm not reading from it anymore, I'm writing to it. And it will look, we would expect this 58 to change to 12. And it does. So we can very easily read from and write to ranges using the dot value property. So that's looking at a single cell or a single range. Um, but if we want to have a, a group or a block, uh, we can define those a few different ways. So the first thing we can do is define the range. Let's put an address in there. And let's just use the select method. Uh, and in that case, we would expect C5 to be selected. And it is. We can specify a block of ranges or a group of ranges using the top left and bottom right. So in this case, let's go C1, actually let's go C2 through D10. So we can just put the colon in here. Top left, colon, bottom right. And now we have a group. I can also do the top left to bottom right on a single row, like this. And it highlights just that particular row. I can highlight two non-contiguous or multiple non-contiguous rows. So now, my first block will start with C2 and go to C10, so the top right, bottom left. And then I'll have another block that will highlight that will go from E2 to E10. So I can 
highlight non-contiguous ranges, or I can select non-contiguous ranges, like this. I can also identify a range of ranges, and this is going to be very useful to us as we move on. So if I'm going to identify a range of ranges, I start off with the range command, only it's empty. There's no address in it. I go inside of there, and now I'm going to identify my range of ranges using the top left and bottom right. So there's my top left and it's range C2. And then my bottom right will be another specified range of E10. So again, I'm going to open a range and it's blank. Then I'll go in and I'll specify a range to be my top left and a range to be my bottom right. So this is essentially the same thing as putting the colon in here, but this will be useful to us later on when we're using uh, an end method. So right now let's just see if it works, and it does. So, so far we've looked at all the different ways that we can identify a range.